Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh episode of the Squirtle Squadcast. Today we are joined by our uh, bunch of uh, panelists like usual. I'm going to use the term panelists. I hope no one's offended by that. Uh, and today we've got um, myself, that is Nick, Majora's fan. I'm sure you guys all know me by now. Uh, I like anime. I'm a weeb, kind of. Uh, yeah, that's about that. I just woke up. Forgive me, everyone. Anyway, uh, and joining us today, we have Jossum. What's up, bongos? And Marissa. Hi. And Zach. I'll have you know that I'm very offended by the term panelist. I apologize. I'll think of a better term in the future that probably won't be better. We also have Scott, our co-host today. Hi, I'm back from the dead. We have both been. Sick. Oh, we were not here last week either. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Wow. I was watching boxing. That's what I was just doing. Oh, uh, uh, the Mayweather fight? Yeah, a whole, a whole two hours. I hope you didn't spend $100 for that. I don't know, man. I, 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 we'll get on to that. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it in a minute. And we also have Zero today with us. Hello. Yeah, um, so boxing, huh? Yeah, that happened. It happened often <laughs> recently. Uh, <laughs> I hopped around. Uh, no, yeah, I didn't watch it myself, but I heard a lot of people were super excited for it, and then they, uh, they were casual boxing fans, so they were pretty disappointed when they actually watched it. That's why I'm just a casual pro wrestling fan, and I watch the wrestling <laughs> events, which are just as disappointing at times. <laughs> But well, yeah. at least it's not happy it happened in pro, in pro wrestling. Here just nothing happened except Mayweather where uh, Mayweather just ran around for a few minutes. Alright, oh, alright, oh, 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 I've had enough of that already now. I'm gonna I'm gonna settle this white one score, okay? All everyone got saw this massive hyped up fight in the century, right? And they go out and they go on pay per view or they go to a bar or whatever. Pay per view and they're expecting 1980s Mike Tyson, you know, 90 seconds or less, bang, bang, knockout. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what they, that's what they thought would happen. And then they're like, hang on a minute, this is the welterweight division. <laughs> yeah. Speedy, quick, um, nimble. This is Floyd Mayweather Money Jr., the greatest defensive technical boxer the world has ever seen. And an aged, injured Manny Pacquiao. So, like, people are expecting, like, just, just to put it in context, right? Mayweather was a bronze medalist in Olympic boxing, right? So he, he's always played for points. Yeah. Whereas Tyson and Pacquiao play for knockouts, but you're not supposed to play for knockouts in modern boxing. You're supposed to play for points. So he's basically like tapping you on the shoulder, but it counts as a hit. It's really stupid when you think about it, but that, that's why boxing's a sport, not a fight. Yeah. So everyone comes in expecting uh, a street fight, and they come out with a... a if you're a boxing enthusiast, you'd, you'd appreciate it because it was because uh, half the time, like I was when I was watching it, like pe people were cheering when they saw like uh, Mayweather get in. When Mayweather got his uh, his flurry and jab in round five, they were cheering like mad. And then no one no one actually notices when uh, when uh, Floyd gets a hit in, or they didn't even notice when Floyd blocks or or, or, or ducks all this all, all of uh, Mayweather's uh, punches. It's like it's like people are cheering when when uh, when Pacquiao is getting none of the hits on. So it's, it was. I can see why people are frustrated. I, I'm not a big boxing fan myself. I don't watch boxing. I've watched like you know some of the big fights with Tyson and stuff. But that's why I knew I wasn't going to be interested in this because I knew I wouldn't get the technicalities of it, and I knew it wasn't you know going to be as incredible as people are hyping it for. So I just didn't decide to worry about it. And then people are like attacking it now and i figured that uh that would be the case but yeah you're right i mean like you said like i said casual fans just aren't gonna get it and i'm a casual person so i uh didn't get it <laughs> but i admit that and i understand it but i can see like the merit and people would be really interested in it i enjoyed a solid two rounds of wee boxing that was good <laughs> I think I mentioned that in one of the previous podcasts that, like, uh, yeah, we did. We're yeah, because I was sports. talking about how tiring it was, and uh, it, that's it a is. workout, man. Yeah, I used to sweat. There is a boxing mode in in Wii Fit, so you know you want to get fit, just box with your Wii mode. You got the. Did, did you guys hear about how much like Mayweather and Pacquiao made from the fight? Yeah, oh, 120 and million. 80 million respectively, right? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, Mayweather gets five million, 
per minute he's in the ring, and Pacquiao got three million. And what's crazy is Mayweather was making two million more per minute. Yeah, yeah, he was. It's just absolutely nuts. Like, why is they're making so much money? Kind of stuff right there. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. even finances that? That's so much money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. I, I'm, I'm kind of salty. How much about people it. paid to get to uh, get to that venue? I mean, every single bar across the world. Yeah. Well, yeah, the tickets yeah, were expensive. The but and, and if, yeah, the pay per view itself was hell so expensive. It was bad. I, I mean, it wasn't bad. It's just I wouldn't be able to pay it. And I'm, I'm again, casual fan. I'm not going to pay a hundred dollars. Even as a fan of pro wrestling, I'm, I'm be hesitant to pay fifty dollars for a pay per view monthly. But now you don't have to because the WWE where our network is only nine ninety nine. Well, how do you guys plug right there? Yeah, it how was do you guys feel club. about attending a, a live event like football or something? Like, I had some friends of mine go to the Super Bowl, and you know, it's just like whatever a one thousand dollar journey, and the the tickets are super expensive. And then when you get there, it's just a bunch of sweaty, loud people, and you don't even have a good view of the. The game. Well, I mean, it depends on uh, if you're a diehard fan or something. Like, you know, like, I mean, if I'm a huge fan of Paul McCartney, which I am, uh, I would consider going to a concert of his if I had the money and go, even if it was really expensive, because I'd love the experience. And if you're a huge fan of your sports team, you really are invested in the season, you go, then that, that's something. Now, of course, me, I'm not. I think live sporting events can be pretty cool. Like, for instance, football. I much prefer watching football live than I do on TV. TV, I just don't get excited for it. But when I'm live, there's, like, this energy. It's really cool. But I don't go to, like, pro games or anything. I go to, like, my college games while I'm at Marshall. Yeah. And I go to, like, I went to high school games all the time. But I don't go to pro games or anything like that. And I wouldn't be willing to shell out the money because, again, I'm not a huge fan of that. But if that is something you're really into, then I guess it would be worth it. I mean, money's subjective, and what it might seem like a huge waste of money to you or me might be like someone else's treasure. And then my entire figure collection looks like a huge waste of money to most people, but I, I really am happy with it, and it makes me smile. So if it makes someone else really happy and it's a treasured memory, I guess that's something. But me, no, I'd never do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think I kind of get it, but it, like if I had enough money where it wasn't an issue, then I would definitely want to go to like a, like the MLB World Series. Like that's something that I would definitely want to do. But because that would be such a financial, like I wouldn't go to something if it was like I'm going to be spending several paychecks on this, and I'm going to go even though it's going to mean that I'm going to be worrying about money for the next few months. But like I would go if I was like a wealthy person and was like, you know what, let's just do it. Don't worry, your podcast check is coming in. Ah, uh, my like seven cents. <laughs> you, you go, for, you go for the social though. It's mostly the social. Yeah, that's you, so mo cool. you mostly just go for the environment. Yeah, there's a there's like a mm. whole lot of energy, and like when you go to like a stadium, like Nick said, like it's a lot of sporting events. There's a whole lot of energy in it. Like uh, when I was when I was younger, I went to Yankee Stadium with my dad. And uh, it's so much different than watching it off, like a Yankees game on TV. Like, there's so much energy in the stadium. Like, even if you're like sitting right behind the plate or like up in the grandstands, there's the energy is the same throughout the stadium. So, if you're like a fan of that energy, I say go for it. But like, if you're strapped for cash, I'd say pass. So. I mean, I've gone to baseball games and sat in the bleachers and had just as much fun. I mean, it's not really about the seats. It's just more like I'm not gonna travel all the way across the country. And especially as, like, a female with sports, it's like that environment is not as appealing, I don't think. Yeah, because girls don't play sports. That's <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're all those. Right. Yeah, I mean, what I really want is to see some guy's hairy, fat, shirtless chest with body paint on it. That is just what I need. Hey, <laughs> you I could need. do, like... <laughs> you, you is Jocelyn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know, like, for me, I'm way too cheap to do anything like that. Like, I, like, even when my friends go out to eat, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'll just stay home because I'm so cheap. I end up spending my money on other things. Uh, I, I have my priorities much different than certain other people. Like, uh, like, I save my money to buy Battlefront 2 for $3 rather than going to eat out for, well, a lot more than three dollars. Well, that's my argument with video games in general. It's like getting a forty dollar video game, you know, can give me sixty hours of entertainment or something. Well, you can go to a movie theater with your family for like more than forty dollars and 
it's like a few hours. Dollars. It's just yeah. chicken sessions, and it's just like two hours of entertainment. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's why I always like permanent things, like get the DVD more. And like I, like I paid a decent amount of money for my giant yeah. little TV here, yeah. so I can watch stuff all the time. And it's not a movie theater, but I, I mean, again, I guess it just depends on if the experience is worth it to you. Like I went to see the new Avengers recently, and it was pretty good. And I think it was worth the matinee price that I paid. It would probably be worth the uh, nighttime price as well, but I'm too cheap, so I went to a matinee. But uh, and I, I guess it just depends. But I agree with you in general. That's why, like I said, I rarely spend my money on things that aren't permanent. And I, I blew a lot of money on like stuff recently, like my PS3 and stuff. But I'm gonna be able to use those for years to come. So I think it's worth the investment. Well, I think the thing about like a movie or, or like a one trip, like a theater show or or a baseball game or a football game or something, is that. Like, you're paying for an experience that you can't just have at home. Like, oh, yeah. you're paying for something, because like we talked about earlier, like, oh, like, going to a real game is completely different from sitting at home and, like, watching a game, even if you're, like, with friends and you have some, like, chips and dip or something. Like, it's, it's a different experience. It's not the same thing. The same is true of movies, unless you have, like, a home theater system, in which case, why would you ever go to the movies? <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're going for the experience, which, you know, whether it's worth it, I think, is up to debate, but it's, like, you're you're going, you're paying for that, not just, like, being able to, like, view the, the thing that is happening. Yeah, I agree. Um, generally. Oh my god. Hey, hey P, what is that you got there? It's a chip and dip. <laughs> Chips on the side and the dip in the middle. It's a chip and dip. <laughs> I, I don't know. I uh I, I, I don't usually like going out and spending a whole lot of money, but if it's cost ex like not too expensive and it's nearby or something, I'd definitely go. Um, it depends on like local things and just whatnot. But then again, here I am going to like a convention like several hours away in the summer. That's going to cost me well, a decent amount of money. Um, I'm actually going to try fair, to do we're, we're guilting you into doing so, so it's partly my fault. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I'm still doing it regardless. I could have just been like, nope, uh, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to try to get a summer job as well, so maybe I can pay back my guilty debts. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, everyone has different things and different interests. Uh, me, obviously, I'm not too much of a sports person, but I think they can be fun, and I get why people like them. I actually recently watched a video about what if uh, people hated sport, other things as much as they say they hated sports, and it was kind of eye-opening. It's made me try to be more conscious about not just like attacking sports just because I'm not a huge fan. Because like the video was like huh, reading, I grew out of that after high school. Or <laughs> like, wow, I haven't watched movies since like ninth grade. Does that person still direct anymore? Or, or like, it, it was it was interesting. So I've tried to uh, keep my mouth shut about like not liking sports because they can be pretty cool depending. And but then I do not know a lot about it. So like recently, some of my friends had like legitimately an hour long conversation about the Patriots and their like cheating tactics lately. So I did that to try to incite anger with anyone. Yeah, but uh, no, apparently something new came up with it where they're like quarterback new. I don't know. See, I don't know anything about it, but they had an hour long conversation. And so I just decided to play Love Live School Idol Festival on my iPod. So, uh, and I did. Right? <laughs> it was fun. And then I stopped playing and they were still talking. And I was like, please. <laughs> oh, well. Well,. Um, as interesting as sports are, I'm more of a poli-sci major, and so I uh, noticed recently, well, not too, too recently at this point, but a few weeks ago, or a month ago, or something like that, um, so Vladimir Putin banned memes in Russia. That's a really broad thing. More specifically, he banned memes that were, like, patronizing or disrespecting officials of Russia. So, like... Sadmir Putin is now illegal in Russia and whatnot. Uh, um, what do you all think about that? Who doesn't get hate handle dick memes? Basically. Yeah, I don't know. Like, China. Huh? You've gone from hating China to now hating Russia. It's great. We will have that thing about the great Chinese firewall. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, haha, we can make fun of King, of, uh, of Mao Zedong and uh, Tiananmen Square and what we want, and China will never know now it's Russia. I, I do hate, though, how China, like, they're okay with, like, American um, uh, goods being, digital goods being pirated, but their own stuff, they, they censor so hard and get so offended if anyone steals or misuses something of theirs. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, like the statistics, something like 9 out of 10 copies of Windows in China are pirated. <laughs> that sounds about right, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, well, 300 Heroes speaks for itself, right? <laughs> um, that uh, weird yeah. MOBO with, like, all the uh, IPs from Japan that they just ripped off. They kept updating it, by the way. They keep adding characters I like. They're, like, trying to get me to get it again, but I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, for the, <laughs> you're better than that, Nick. For those of you that don't know, 300 Heroes is like a uh, knockoff of League of Legends where they just like blatantly take copyrighted characters and put them into the game. And they even have like the same map that League of Legends has, but it has something like, I don't know, Saber from Fate Stay Night being a character or Shrek and Donkey <laughs> it being is. a character. Yep, they recently added a lot of popular titles like Gundam 00 Riser. Uh, they added... Um, my, they, my favorite character from Railgun. They have a lot of fake characters in there now, like Archer. They just like everyone. Like I looked at it and I was like, wow, they're in here too now. I think like Son Goku is there now too. It's ridiculous. So, but yeah, China's famous for doing that, ripping off things and uh, whatnot. I, I'm not a fan of it, but yeah, because Russia is being more quote unquote aggressive. Well, we got to be mad at them, raw. So, <laughs> oh well. Putin uh, is actually doing all this nationalistic stuff because he's lost a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of popularity, but he was, like, hovering safely around 80% for a while. And then when he won his uh, uh, election back in 2012, people did think there was some rigging and he got some flack for it. So he dropped down, like, 60% approval rating, which, like, presidents here would kill for. So he decided to get it back. He would win over the hearts and minds of nations, uh, the nationalists there. And so he did like the stuff like occupying Crimea, doing all this stuff like banning memes, banning homosexuality, going back to Russian cultural norms. And to us it sounds really crazy, but they really like it. They're like, yes, we're going back to the power and strength of Russia. I love it and all this stuff. People like legitimately no, love yeah, the Vladimir thing Putin. is that like as outsiders we think like, oh man, like Putin, what an awful guy. Like, can't believe it, but to, in, in Russia, it's not, like, the, the perspective is completely different. It's just, as people from the outside were like, that seems bad, which I think it is, but it's just, you know. Yes. I just think it's hilarious that the Olympics were hosted in Russia, and then, like, a week after they ended, <laughs> Putin <laughs> declared war on Crimea. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, Literally, as soon as everyone else leaves the country. <laughs> uh, Putin was already in con in like plans to do that anyway at that point, but like you know, um, it's really funny because like you never know what's gonna happen like eight years down the road after you've already applied to have like the Olympics there. So like I'm sure they didn't imagine back in 2004 that this was gonna be the situation because Russia was in pretty bad straits in 2004. Looks like they were gonna collapse and like break up into smaller states. Now, no, not so much. <laughs> I, I guess that's true when you try to get the host of the Olympics. It's like a ten year process basically. Yeah, because like what they uh, they uh, they uh, dealt with the Tokyo they, Olympics in 2020. That was back in like 2014, 2013, right? So yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. It's so silly, you have to bet on it, and then you to just get a chance to host it. And yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a like, complex ha process. Most of the times you lose money from hosting the Olympics, either to, like, ups your tourism or whatever. It's a complicated process. It, it, you definitely lose money because oftentimes you, like, build new stadiums and whatnot. So you're like, yeah. oh, got to have this updated things, and... Oh wow! Well. <laughs> then they never use it after the Olympics. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, the birds, hang on, the bird's nest, the bird's nest, the twenty. The one in China? No, the one in London. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 the bird's nest that's... is the one in China. Yeah, the yeah, bird's nest is the one in China. Yeah. I don't. I think that's. I think that. I think they're using. I think they knocked that down. But the one in in um in London is. is I kid you not. Is 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 sold to a Premier Ship football team. 
Wow. Well, uh, there's yeah, a big that's deal interesting. about it. It's actually like everywhere. Like if you ever go visit like an old like Olympic heritage site, like some of them are like just abandoned and they have like weeds everywhere. Like the one in uh, I think LA is like completely overrun with weeds. But like but some of them are like refurbished, like the bubble dome where the um like the aquatic center for the in the two thousand eight Olympics. It's now a water park, but it's like so freaking crowded that you can't even get in anyways. So, also side note, I like how we just turned right back into sports. Like, right <laughs> we can't get started. away from sports. Well, then let's get away drastically from sports. Uh, uh, the seltzer thread, yeah, that'll work. Zach, it's all yours. Yeah, so the the seltzer thread on the forums, it's a. A very hot debate that's been going on recently. <laughs> it's not even a debate, it's like Dragon Knight and one other person are like, yeah. Seltzer, yes! And everyone's and everyone like, Seltzer, like, no. <laughs> Alright, so like, when they say Seltzer, do they mean like, Alka Seltzer? Water. They, mean, like, water. They, they do not mean Rachel Seltzer. Oh, then I made a drastic mistake. I should have clicked yes, I like it. I clicked no because I thought they meant Alka Seltzer. I was like, no, that sucks. Wait, uh, what the heck? <laughs> Alright, it depends because I don't understand. Like, I'm completely unsure of what you guys are talking about at this point because I drink uh, flavored water that is somewhat carbonated and I really oh, like it. No, they mean it's just like, plain carbonated water. Like, what's it called? Like, Pecorino? What's the brand? Pecorino. <laughs> Perrier. <laughs> <laughs> you mean no flavor? It's just carbonated? Yeah. yeah. What are they, Germans? Like what you would use if you were making an, an Italian soda and then you put that in and then you put the flavor in. Yeah, like I heard like Germans drink that left and right, but uh, no, if it doesn't have flavor, that's kind of bad. Oh, it's used for vodka, and that's all right. Yeah, it's the same thing, Scott. Yeah. No, they're not. Well, some sort of flavor. Is it's it? soda water. No, it doesn't. It's just it's like when you're at a really fancy restaurant and they're like, would you like flat water or sparkling? And that would be the sparkling option. Yeah, club soda's just carbonated soda water as well. I don't know. I mean, when I... When and they, I went, they'll add a lemon to it or something. Yeah, the only time, the only time I drink club soda... Is is when, I, is, when I'm, is, is when I'm not consuming alcohol, but I want to look like I'm consuming alcohol, so I get a club soda with four limes in there. And even after four four lime wedges, it still tastes like club soda. Absolutely yeah. disgusting. I don't even, I don't know. I don't even really like soda, so I don't yeah, know I don't why I would like soda, soda water. Like a, I mean, I love soda water, but it has to be flavored. Um, like, I drink, like, the cherry ones, and they're great. But, um, and they're not really all that cherry. It's not really too flavored. I mean, I used to not drink it, but, like, the problem was is I used to only drink, like, Sprite. Well, I used to drink root beer when I was really young. Then I started drinking Sprite because I didn't want to drink darker colas. And I drank Sprite, like, only Sprite for a really long time. So to get me off of that, my mom gave me, like, uh, the sparkling, uh, like, the, the flavored soda water. She and I was you off of Sprite. Yeah. And so I started drinking that and a lot less Sprite. And then when I got to college, there was no sparkling water. So I went back to soda for a while, and I gained, like, 20 pounds so then i decided to stop that and i went only to water and i've tried to only drink water and the spa the soda water here at home so I yeah that's like, my story if i'm gonna have flavored water i'm gonna drink tea i'm not gonna drink like like sparkling water with like a hint of lime well i mean they're also flavor packs like i used to drink those sometimes you can put them in water they're okay oh i thought but you meant like, just straight <laughs> no you can just like drink the flavor it's great Echo, like, <laughs> basically Nick is very knowledgeable about pixie sticks. I had a lot of pixie sticks because uh, the campus store at Marshall used to have like pixie sticks so I would buy them and I had a lot of pixie sticks I've run out of pixie sticks uh, since however they started stocking Jolly Ranchers but I made the mistake of buying just as many Jolly Ranchers and I forgot how many are in a bag so I have like legitimately 13 bags of Jolly Ranchers with like what 40, 30 uh, Jolly Ranchers each in them. So I have like an overflow of Jolly Ranchers. So uh, now I understand what Will's predicament was when he was in college. <laughs> but, the question is, what is your favorite flavor Jolly Rancher? 
I like the cherry and the blue raspberry quite a bit. Usually I like cherry more than blue raspberry in candies, but the blue raspberry for Jolly Ranchers are really good, so They're I'm really torn good. on the yeah, two. Blue, blue Green is my least favorite. Then I like watermelon next, and then I like grape quite a bit, and then I'm torn on blue and red being my favorites, but yes. I like the green ones. The green ones are pretty good too, I think. Yeah, see, the good thing is with Jolly Ranchers is some people really like the ones I don't like. So it's not like certain candies where it, like everyone likes the same like thing. It's a social it's candy. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I can like give people the watermelons if they like the watermelons, and I can keep the blue ones. It's really cool. So we're gonna have to fight over the blue ones, though. If, you ever, <laughs> if, you ever, if we ever meet up, we're gonna That's fight over fair. the blue ones. That's fair. Marissa, what's your favorite then? Because oh, I'm like probably going to have blue, chocolate. I like blue raspberry, I'm sorry. I mean, but I don't really, I don't eat a lot of candy. I just eat chocolate. Well, like guess what? Candy. I'm bringing yeah, Jolly Ranch and Soda Con, so you have to prepare for that. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. Chocolate's just another layer of the food pyramid for females. I'll just like, I'll just like, <laughs> 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 okay, okay, human beings. Yeah. Everybody, like, send in chocolate to me, Marissa. <laughs> I need it to survive. It's part of the food pyramid. She needs it to survive the winter, so she's talking about it right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna, like... <laughs> just like, gonna gain, chocolate. like, 50 pounds and hibernate it off. Let's just go for it. Chocolate is, like, the dirt that the pyramid sits on. Wait, what? Like, if you think of it like an Egyptian pyramid, <laughs> it's all of the sand. <laughs> this is was, of the Mayan pyramid. That was too deep for me. <laughs> yeah. Too deep for me. <laughs> All right, so anywho, uh, one of our last topics we are going to talk about is Nintendo Land, a special new theme park that's going to be made, if that's correct. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yes! Oh, well, what would it be then? <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo Land isn't just a Wii U game anymore. <laughs> oh, no, is it? Well, what is it then? Because, oh my god, why do I have to do this? But, uh, <laughs> basically, Nintendo and Universal are teaming up so that there'll be like Nintendo ride with parentheses S rides at Universal Parks. So that. It's a thing now. Yeah, basically they're putting Nintendo IPs in Universal Studios theme parks. It seems like it's going to be in California and Orlando and elsewhere in the world, which is great because I absolutely love Universal Studios. Disney is obviously the winner here because they're too strong, but I really like Islands of Adventure in Orlando. I've been there a few times since I was a kid. They have a full, like, a Jurassic Park section with the gates. It's really cool. Jurassic they, Park's so cool. They recently added the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and people really like that. It also has butterbeer, which is delicious. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's pretty nice. I like theme parks, and depending on what they do, they could do a lot of really cool things. I know someone theorized a Rainbow Road roller coaster would be the best. As long as you don't Oh, fall that off. would be so cool. Oh my cool. god, that'd be dope. Yeah, oh my god. I would ride that, like, all day. But what if you could just fall off? What if you could fall off? <laughs> <laughs> then they would get lawsuits. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe Rainbow Road. Rainbow Road is the way you go. It's oh, like, like a plan would... drop off, and then the lack of lack of no lack of, lack of two just like pulls you up from. If they the could ground. somehow do that, that'd be the sickest. But in my vision, in my vision, I'm seeing. Like... <laughs> Are you Raven Simone? <laughs> 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 oh god! No, I was like, I was just seeing like a roller coaster. It's uh, it's not actually like you drive on Rainbow Road, but it's a roller coaster. What are those things called? Where like the carrots just drag you on the rail or the tracks or whatever. Oh yeah. And it's just like it would have Rainbow Road music playing. It could be indoors and have like a dark like background Space of Mountain. stars and stuff. It'd be like Space Mountain except Rainbow Road. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Which would be, be really like, cool. I love Space Mountain. It could be like the Mario sixty, the Mario Kart sixty four one where you have the characters light up in the sky. Yeah. I, just I think that would be cool. I just want a Pokemon carousel. That'd be awesome. <laughs> because I am six. I think, I think the best the best IP for a roller coaster, I think, would be like Star Fox. That like, or like F Zero. Yeah. Star like Fox. F-Zero. No, Star Fox would be one of those like the 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 ones where they have like you sit in a little 
like a little car or a yeah, plane like or something, and then it like lifts you up and you sort of like soar around in the air. The problem is all oh. the kids would want to fight to see like who gets the year, uh, like, blue falcon. But there's the obvious uh, Donkey Kong grumbling graphs. <gasps> oh, oh, that the oh, okay. I love like rafting rides. <laughs> like the Jurassic Park one. Big fan. Oh yeah, I love that. Holy cow, it's that's cool really good. Ride. Because they have like two of those at Islands of Adventure. They have one for Dudley, uh, Dudley Do Right, in the comic area. But they also have the Jurassic Park one. I keep forgetting that Islands of Adventure is not in California. So you're talking about the one that I'm is about the Singapore one. So because oh. I haven't been to the California one. Oh well, regardless, it's exactly the I same mean, as the one in Islands of Adventure. <laughs> because uh, yeah, Islands of Adventure is a full Jurassic Park section, and in it is the Jurassic Park. Ride. And it's really fun. Uh, it's the same. It's the same ride. In, in it is. Yeah. yeah. I have a really hard time riding those though because whenever the drop comes, my body instinctively makes it so I shift my head down and to the right, so I can't stare forward. But it's still very fun. What? <laughs> It'd be interesting to see a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, I've. I. Uh, we have seen them. I've never actually bought them because it's always the same. I'm just like trying to cower back in. <laughs> But I was yeah, afraid of roller coasters years, like, until recently, so... Everyone else is screaming and has their hands up and looking at the camera and you're just like, they're cowering in fear. You yeah. need to just take a, a selfie of you doing that in your room and just edit it in both. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta funny. edit it into a Hannah Montana concert. <laughs> Hannah Montana. <laughs> so, so I put my hands up the play <laughs> Butterfly fly away. Oh my god. <laughs> but anyways, back to theme parks related to Nintendo. Uh, yeah. It'd be cool to see a Mario Kart go kart track. Yeah, it could yeah. work, yeah. Or, or bumper even, cars. Like, the cars ride. Yeah, um, bumper cars would be great. great. Like the cars ride in uh, I think it's in California Adventure. I know that that's really popular. But I, I know that everybody lives not near California Adventure, so probably has no idea what I'm talking about, but it's just, it's a really popular ride. That you, yeah. Like, ride in the car. And they're probably going to do one of those uh, spinning teacup rides that I hate. They're probably going to have one of those, but, like, with Mario mushrooms or something. Oh, uh, yeah. With, with like, like, Koopa shells, probably. Koopa shells, yeah. Like, oh, that'd be cool. Uh, but I think, yeah, as I was saying, I think Star Fox would be a pretty good roller coaster because, like, they do, like, loops and stuff in the game. Like, you can you do, do a barrel roll. roll. Yeah, yeah, you can actually do a barrel roll. That'd be painful. I'd throw up, but, uh... <laughs> how do people I, I, I just wonder how they're going to do a, do a Legend of Zelda for a theme park. Mm. Maybe, like, a shooting gallery thing, like, with or a bow and arrow? Or it could be, like, um, in, or... in Disneyland, there's, like, a Tarzan area where it's not our actual ride, really, but it's just, like, you explore and you get to see all of these things. Um, and it's just I've... meant for, like, kids to climb around and, like, look at stuff. No, what you want for Zelda is like a milk bar. I would yes. drink to that all the time. They have like the alcoholic milk. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. well, like you gotta like. <laughs> I guess so, but I don't know. Or like make like a snack bar, but like make it seem like the milk bar. Milk like, just seems like a weird drink for amusement <laughs> park. Yeah. I don't know. I think that would be dope. I'd go to that. I'd spend like. Three hours of my day there, I went to a theme park and they have the milk bar. Uh, I don't know, for like Legend of Zelda, I think it was, I, I guess I was thinking like maybe having like the Haunted Mansion like ride where you're just getting like the car and then it just tours around like Hyrule Castle and like stuff goes on in the background, like Link fighting Ganondorf in the background or something. Oh, like uh, a yeah. story ride? I actually like those, but they're not usually as popular. They could do that for that Mario 64 level where you're on those rainbow carpets as well. Oh, that's true. That'd, that'd be, be cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, How do people feel about just roller coasters in general? Just wondering, because I know that some people really love roller coasters and some people hate roller coasters. I really like uh, them now. I used to not like them so much. As long as they don't flip upside down, I'm fine with them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the steel coasters because, uh, yeah, I big upside down makes me queasy, but um, I like the wooden coasters, like uh, like uh, in Six Flags, 
uh, Great Adventure, there's a there's a large one called El Toro. That's like my favorite ride. It's like the largest wind coaster in the U.S. or something. The bull. Yeah, there's a wind coaster in Santa Cruz, and I don't know. I was not a fan when I was little, but that was because the thing that I do like about the more recent ones is they really lock you in. Like you feel, uh, like you're they, like they usually have like a thing over your head that locks down. The wooden one in Santa Cruz, I went on it when I was like seven, and so I was this little girl, and there was this big bar, and that was the thing that held you in was this bar that because I was next to an adult who was with me, so the bar was set so that they could fit in. So there was like a solid like seven inches between me and the bar, oh, and that's terrifying. <laughs> Not a, not fun. So I, I prefer the ones that like lock you in, even if they go upside down. Wow. Even if they go upside down. Even if. Well, I used to be really against upside down, but yeah, um, like like I was afraid of uh, roller coasters until recently, and then like I rode a wooden coaster and I really enjoyed that, and then I like got rid of my fright by riding more and more, and then eventually I rode like the steel super coaster thing what was it called the phantoms revenge and uh i liked it and then i went to islands of adventure after i was not afraid of coasters anymore and i rolled the i rode the incredible hulk roller coaster five times on the fifth time i rode in the front seat and that was exciting <laughs> so i like what i when i first the reason why i don't like steel coasters was like when i was when i first went to a theme park uh one of there was a ride called the Great American Screen Machine where they had like seven inversions and like uh, the rides like the the cart like somehow stopped right in the middle of one of the loops so we were like just hanging upside down for, like half a minute before it just started up again and that's pretty much why I don't like steel coasters anymore wow. it was like just hanging upside down there for like thirty seconds like when you're like in like eleven or twelve ish it's like really scary so. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't, I mean, I wouldn't want to hit ha- It's the only reason why I'm okay with like a loop de loop is just because usually you just go through the yeah, loop. Yeah, normally you just go, but when like the right stops like right there, and, like when you're upside down, it's really frightening. Yeah. So, I can understand that. I'm probably more afraid of Ferris wheels than I am of roller coasters, though. Ferris wheels. I do not like Ferris wheels. Why? Because I, because I don't like heights. Ah, I see. Isn't there heights on roller coasters? There are. But you, but, but you go <laughs> fast is the thing. And go fast. Wheels, they'll like, you'll get to the top and they'll just be like, you know, just sit there. <laughs> well, not... the reason why they're, they're doing that is so that the people can get off at the bottom. Oh, I know. I mean, they do it for re- It's not just like for funsies, but it's like they still stop you. And in the one, and there's one in like going back to California, there's one where you can have it like slide like rock back and forth. So my friends are like, let's go on it. I mean, I think Ferris wheels are okay, but like, all right, when you and Will get in an anime situation, I'll be sure to tell them (laughs) not to take you on the Ferris wheel. Oh my god. I still do it, it's just that they freak me out, and I get all like paranoid. (laughs) I guess you shouldn't be going on the London Eye if you ever go to London. (laughs) Man. Uh, I can't remember the last time I've been to a theme park, so I'm not a big roller coaster person. I was like, only a theme park around here sucks. And it's like an hour away, so I'm not going to do that for a day of my life when I can just do other things. That's fair. See, I have a great fun story, and I guess we can wrap out with this. Um, wrap up, I mean, not wrap, wrap out. Wrap out. <laughs> Word life. Uh, Anyway, basically, I went to Disney World, Disneyland, Disney World. Which one is in California? Disneyland? Land. So I went to Disney World um, a few years ago. It was during Thanksgiving break. Um, I went during the, uh, it was the same time I went to Allen's Adventure last time. And uh, me and my parents were going to go to a Disney park. Uh, we were going to go to Animal Kingdom because zoos and whatnot. We were just going to experience that. Well, Dad got in a really bad mood, and Mom got sick. So Dad wasn't going to go, and Mom wasn't going to go. So we had three Disney park tickets that we paid for that were just, like, useless now. So I was like, hey, you know what? I, I can still go to Disney, right? And they were like, if you find your own way, damn it. And I was like, okay. And so I took the three tickets, and I decided in myself to go to three Disney theme parks in one day. So 
I got there at like 9 a.m. I went to MGM Studios Park first, and I went to the Star Wars ride. I rode the movies ride thing they had. I rode the Tower of Terror. That was horrifying. Oh, my God, I'm bad with drops. Uh, um, but it was fun, I guess. Um, I'm trying to remember if I did any. Oh, yeah, and I rode the Rock and Roller Coaster with ACDC twice because that was really fun because it has, like, music in the back, and they have really good head support. My biggest problem with roller coasters is uh, my neck gets thrown around a lot, and I have back and neck problems. Problems. So, uh, yeah, that was definitely something nice. So I got to have head support. It was fun. And then around noon, I left and went to Animal Kingdom, ate at the Rainforest Cafe, most expensive prime rib I've ever had, but also the best prime rib I've ever had. I was like, it's Disney, YOLO. And then uh, I enjoyed, like, seeing all the animals and stuff. Watched the Finding Nemo musical at, like, 6. And then at 7, I went to the Magic Kingdom, and uh, I stayed there for, like, 3 hours, did stuff like the Pirates of the Caribbean and whatnot. And then I watched the fireworks... And it was a really cool time. The only problem is I then tried to get back because the hotel shuttle bus showed up at 10.45 and the fireworks ended at like 10.30. So I tried to make it back to the parking lot, but that was not a good idea because the ferry was filled to the brim and all the train things were also filled. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got there, I watched the hotel shuttle bus leave. But um, uh, one of the other buses like took pity on me and let me ride to a certain distance, and then I had a cab bring me back. And my parents were like, huh, the bus was supposed to be back at 11. Why are you back at 1 a.m.? And I was like, yeah, the bus is late. <laughs> so it was fun. So that was my story. So woo. What an adventure. Indeed it was. And hopefully the Nintendo adventure will be just as good for all of you when you go. Well, I really, I really want to go <laughs> I, I'm interested in going, but well, well crash group trip to, to Orlando. When, <laughs> when I'm rich, out. we can all go. <laughs> Just take Dude, everybody. California is so far away for me and Scott. More specifically, Scott. Well, there's, 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 there's a Universal Studio in Florida. That's closer, I think, to you guys. I've been, I've been there. It's um, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other vibes? I'm not going to say anything. Well. Maybe all right. Well, I think that's about it for our podcast today. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, we'll catch you later. So uh, see you next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, that. Like, subscribe, comment, sell your souls to us. All right. See you later. Check out our Let's Play. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye.